This footage was taken just seconds after several shots rang out, hitting Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico in the abdomen. You can see his security detail picking him up and carrying him frantically to his car before the car speeds off to transport the 59-year-old leader to the hospital. Onlookers stood by in shock. Minutes later, footage showed a suspect on the ground apprehended by police. The shooting took place outside the Culture House in the city of Handlova, some 150 kilometers northeast of the capital, where the leader was meeting with supporters. We went to shake hands with Mr. Fitso. I was taking pictures of him when he was walking out of the building. We were waiting for a long time and we were excited. We wanted to shake his hand and there was a man next to me. And at this moment we had a loud noise. We thought it was a joke, that someone had thrown a firecracker on the ground. That was my first reaction. How many shots did you hear? I heard three quick shots, one after another, like when you throw a firework. Did you see any injuries? Yes, I saw a scratch on his head. And then he fell next to the barrier. I think it's a nightmare. I tell you, I don't think I'll wake up from this. This is not possible to happen in Slovakia. The shooting comes three weeks ahead of crucial European Parliament elections, in which populist and hard-right parties appear poised to make gains. Fico is a third-time premier on his leftist direction party, won Slovakia's parliamentary elections back in September, staging a political comeback after campaigning on a pro-Russian and anti-American message. Critics have worried Slovakia under Fico would abandon the country's pro-Western course and follow the direction of Hungary under populist Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Thousands have repeatedly rallied in the capital and across Slovakia to protest Fico's policies. And for more, let's go to Prague and correspondent to Ian Willoughby. Ian, what's the latest? Well, the latest is that Mr. Fico is in hospital in the city of Banska Bystrica, where he was taken by helicopter from this small town, Handlova, where the shooting took place. He was reported to be conscious, but also there was an official statement saying that his condition is life-threatening. And also the statement said, the next few hours will decide. In the last while, there was also some more footage that appeared online showing the actual shooting. Mr. Fitzo was doing a kind of walkabout among the public in this town when he was speaking to the members of the public and one man came forward, uh, stepped forward, and fired five shots, according to the video, uh, into his chest. And uh, yeah, witnesses said that uh, they had seen a bloody chest wound and head wound. And as you see from the footage just now, he was immediately bundled into the car and taken away by his uh, security team. And uh, yes, the, the assailant was apprehended on the spot. Do we know any more about uh, the suspect? Well, he is a 71-year-old man from a small town called Levice, and uh, according to media reports in Slovakia, he was a poet, some kind of member of some literary group who was also a security guard at some point in the past in a shopping center. We can only speculate about his motives, of course. But what we can say, though, that Mr. Fitzo is a very divisive figure, seen by many as uh, pro-Russian, anti-Ukrainian, a bit like Viktor Orban in, uh, in Hungary, that kind of strongman figure. Also recently, there have been protests in, in Slovakia over his plans to dissolve the national TV and radio broadcaster. So he does have a lot of political enemies. And uh, of course, though, the shooting has been widely condemned, including by the Slovak uh, president, Susanna Chaputova, who said that she was utterly shocked. And of course, that condemnation has been echoed by senior politicians from all over Europe. Well, let's take a listen to her. Uh, Slovakia's president uh, reacting uh, a few short hours after uh, the attack. I'm shocked. We're all shocked by the terrible and vicious attack on Prime Minister Robert Fitzo. What has happened is something that we cannot seem to fathom because we cannot comprehend it. A physical attack of the Prime Minister is, first of all, an attack on a person, but it's also an attack on democracy. Hateful rhetoric, which we can see in society, leads to hateful actions. Please stop it. 
So, uh, Ian Willoughby, uh, again, this is br a breaking news story, and this 71-year-old uh, suspect uh, who's in custody, uh, even though the prime minister made a lot of political enemies, it's too early to say whether this is the act of uh, uh, somebody who is not mentally stable or not. Yes, it is too early to say. It is too early to say whether that's the case. Also, uh, we will find out more about him in the coming days, I'm sure. But I think for Slovakia, this is really bad news. Coming just ahead of the European Parliament's elections, it's already a very divided country, and I think it will only increase divisions in the country now that this uh, terrible uh, thing has happened. And I'm sure there'll be all kinds of accusations and counter-accusations, and uh, also with people on the pro-Russian and anti-Russian side wading in. So I think the Slovaks can, can look forward to, in a sense, a, a difficult time ahead politically. This could play out badly for the country. Ian Willoughby, many thanks. We'll be checking back in with you with live updates uh, as we get further developments. Thank you for that update from, uh, from Prague. Uh, with us, uh, uh, joining us, he was, uh, he's a French academic, was uh, an advisor to Czechoslovakia's uh, first post-Soviet era president, Václav Havel. Jacques Rutnik, thank you for being with us. Pleasure. And we're also joined uh, by our Europe editor, uh, Armin Georgian. Armin, let me begin with you. We, we just heard Ian saying that uh, uh, Slovakia uh, doesn't need this, obviously, and uh, it, it is uh, coming at a time of bitter divisiveness. Uh, the opposition scrapping uh, a protest today, uh, a protest uh, which it had planned against uh, 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 media reforms, public broadcasting media reforms. Yes, there seems to be a kind of truce, uh, as you would expect in an in a unprecedented situation, really. Uh, it's, it's not a time to uh, make a, a political point in that way. But um, as you said, a very uh, divided country at the moment because um, Robert Pizzo has been trying to restructure RTVS, the Slovak public broadcaster. This has brought comparisons with what the former government in Poland did, the Law and Justice Party, setting up a, a kind of um, governing council uh, to lead uh, the 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 reform uh, the opposition would say that's a kind of euphemism it's actually to bring a uh, public broadcaster under the control of uh, of a populist administration that's how they would see it um but uh, the what Fitzer has been saying about that is that the public broadcaster is not objective and so it needs to change very similar to the rhetoric that we heard a few days a few years ago in Poland before of course Poland then turned to Donald Tusk to this kind of more pro-European. But for now, obviously, -European. in the wake of what happened, uh, it's a moment of, uh, as we heard Ian Willoughby explain, a moment of national unity, everybody rallying and hoping for the best for the, for the, for the prime minister. And we're hearing similar uh, words from across the continent. Yeah, and if we want to include uh, Russia on the continent, we just uh, had uh, uh, an um, urgent uh, wire, which uh, I'm reading about... Um, President Putin of Russia uh, condemning this uh, assassination attempt. He calls it a, a hideous crime that can have no justification. Really pretty much the same language as all the uh, Western leaders that we've uh, we've been seeing in the last uh, couple of hours. Uh, we've had reactions from, uh, I think by now, most EU heads of state or government uh, and obviously the leaders of the EU institutions as well, the three leaders, the council, the commission and the parliament and President Zelensky as well, uh, although no political friend of, uh, of Robert Fizzo, but this is, as you said, uh, uh, Francois, a moment of unity and not scoring political points. Very early days, uh, Jacques Rupnik, so I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it's always a shock when uh, there's an assassination attempt against a sitting prime minister. Absolutely. Well, this is totally unprecedented. I mean, it's unprecedented in Slovakia, but it's unprecedented in, in the whole East Central European region. Uh, the only uh, comparison I could make is with Serbia, in the early 2000s, uh, Prime Minister Zoran Džinđić, mm. who attacked, who tried to dismantle organized crime, uh, was assassinated. But that was Serbia coming out of the war 
with uh, coming out of the Milosevic era completely in the hands of gangs. This is something different. Slovakia is a, a democratic country, highly polarized politically, a member of the European Union. And indeed, it has had two campaigns, very polarizing campaigns, one in the fall, uh, the parliamentary elections, which Mr. Fico won, uh, became prime minister. And a second election, a presidential election, very recently, uh, uh, six weeks ago, which uh, Mr. Pellegrini won and became uh, the new uh, president of the country. And he will replace next month uh, Mrs. Chaputova, which we have heard earlier in the program. But uh, one thing is polarization, you know, tough words exchanged during the campaign. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes insults or what have you. But another thing is to, to use violence. And there is no precedent in the country uh, for such use of violence uh, in, 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 in politics. Well, no, in fact, you have to go back to uh, 1986, if we're talking about inside the European Union and the assassination of then Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Palma. Oh. OK, yeah, I was talking about Central Europe, which was uh, where we were heading. Indeed, so you have you have the assassination of uh, uh, of Olaf Palme in Sweden. You had in, in Japan uh, uh, the assassination of uh, Prime Minister Abe, uh, etc. No, you you will find around the world cases of uh, um, uh, sitting prime ministers uh, uh, assassinated. But in, let's say, the, the area we're talking about, East Central Europe, the only uh, example I could find was precisely uh, Serbia. But as I said, this was a very different country. Uh, you know, just to give you an example, Yugoslavia broke up violently and, and, and Mr. Djindjic was, let's say, uh, assassinated in the context of post-war violence. Slovakia and the Czech Republic which we now have, were part of Czechoslovakia. And Czechoslovakia, under President Václav Havel, witnessed something which is called the Velvet Divorce. It was sort of divorced by mutual agreement. So you have a country that has existed. It separates into two countries. And not one window was broken. It was a totally nonviolent exercise. And Indeed, there was, again, there was polarization, obviously, national feelings in Slovakia. It was Mr. Mechar and Mr. Fico, who we are talking about today, is a kind of disciple or follow-up to what Mechar represented, something which we would describe as national populist, nationalist populist. But, um, uh, yeah, Fico tried to capture this national feeling, the populist moment, uh, uh, he tried also to capture the pro-Russian sympathies, let's say, uh, in at least half of the country. Uh, and the idea that we don't want to get involved in, in the war in Ukraine. Uh, this is not our war. This is not, uh, this is not our problem. So, yes, there were all that. Uh, and that is at odds often with what the mainstream European Union countries would uh, 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 propose. But that in itself need not lead to violence. I mean, the, the person who assassinated or well, who tried to assassinate uh, 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 the Slovak prime minister is a poet. And I looked at his blog and uh, the blog is uh, all about you know the world is full of violence and we must uh, we must uh, stop this uh, uh, and uh, uh, he, the only uh, the only kind of reference negative to Fito I, I, I found uh, was precisely related to this uh, to recent war in Russia he says the the whole idea of Slavic brotherhood, the idea that Slovaks would be part of the same Slavic family with, uh, with the Russians, the Ukrainians, and many others. Well, he said, this is, this is total nonsense. There is an aggressor and an aggressed, etc. But that, in, that is a banal statement, but that, mm. uh, that doesn't lead you to, to a violent act against the prime minister you dislike. Well, you heard earlier our correspondent, Ian Willoughby, uh, fearing that uh, there could be dark days ahead for Slovakia. W do you agree with that? Well, uh, indeed. 
there is that there is that possibility that cannot be ruled out. I mean, clearly tonight there will be a moment of unity, and uh, you know everybody will make statements about we should not use violence, we shouldn't go beyond a certain threshold. However, as I said before, there was polarization, and the polarization focused on a, a, a very tough rhetoric against the opposition by Mr. Fitzo and his, uh, uh, and his uh, uh, members of his cabinet, and also against the media. Uh, hence the new media law that they are uh, uh, preparing. And uh, I just, uh, and, and number, on a number of occasions, Fitzo said that the media are propagating uh, not only false news, but also hatred of him. This is a hateful media and they should be stopped, et cetera, et cetera. So there is, there is that element. Now, uh, uh, today, <coughs> Mr. Danko, uh, one of the members of the coalition, is a minister in the government and he's, a, he's um, uh, from the Slovak National Party, that is a far-right nationalist uh, 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 ally of FITO in the government. And he already said uh, that the opposition and the media have blood on their hands. Uh, now, that doesn't bode well, because if you accuse somebody of having some kind of uh, even indirect responsibility. Yeah, I heard it, another senior politician blaming um, uh, progressives and the media. Mm, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Ob uh, progressive, op that is the opposition, the, because the main opposition party is called the progressive party. So when you say progressives, uh, uh, it shouldn't be taken necessarily in the sense that everybody understands. In Slovakia, that specifically focuses on the main opposition party and uh, and the media. And so th that's the enemy, and that is the uh, uh, that will be the target. And this kind of language uh, from Mr. Danko saying you, they have blood on their hands. Well, what do you do with people who have blood on their hands? That is, you associate them uh, uh, with what happened. There's some kind of possible criminalization of the opposition or of the media. Now, uh, if you start that logic, well, you start taking measures against them, and that can lead you on a very, you know, very slippery path uh, towards uh, more authoritarian practices. Now, uh, we don't know yet, but I'm just simply mentioning this possibility, uh, 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 just given the polarization that, that exists and that the kind of language that I start hearing uh, coming from Bratislava. Jacques Rupnik, we've seen across the ex-Soviet space these foreign agent laws uh, coming into the f uh, the f sort of front of debate and huge protests in Georgia, of course, at the moment about that. Uh, I believe I'm right in saying that uh, Robert Fizzo is looking at uh, how f foreign funding of NGOs in Slovakia could be managed. Uh, is that um, part of this whole context here? Uh, yes, I mean, not directly related to the context of the uh, assassination attempt, but it's a part of the general context because in the period preceding the elections, last year's elections, uh, the attacks were not only against uh, the Progressive Party or against uh, uh, the media, but also against NGOs, which were clearly identified as some kind of tools of foreign influence. Now, when Fizzo was talking uh, in the recent past, in the recent years, again, uh, about that, what he had mainly in mind is George Soros and his network. So in this way, he's on the same line as Viktor Orban in neighboring Hungary. Indeed, Fizzo, this is interesting, has in recent time come closer to Orban. You know, in the Visegrad group, which uh, is made of Czech Republic and Slovakia, but also of Poland and Hungary. Uh, it used to be that Hungary and Poland were close together, Kaczynski and Orban, and the Czechs and the Slovaks were kind of uh, moderating influence on, on, on the two uh, radical populists. Well, now that there is a political change in Poland, uh, Poland has sort of returned to, to li or, or is returning, uh, trying to return to liberal democracy and mainstream Europe, 
close to the Czech Republic, and Slovakia going the opposite way, uh, embarking on a more populist, more nationalist, uh, uh, closer to Viktor Orban. And in the context of the current assassination attempt, there may be, I'm, I'm, I'm really using the conditional, maybe this will f uh, 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 push forward this drift towards more authoritarian practices. And what you said about the NGOs, that was exactly, it was one of the targets of Mr. Fizzo. And uh, he clearly associated them with uh, foreign uh, uh, influence. He didn't use the word foreign agents, because <laughs> that is what, Putin first started using, and now the Georgian uh, 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 government is trying to pass this law. Uh, uh, the May, and, and Viktor Orban has passed such a law uh, uh, already several years ago. Uh, the idea that you know, if you, uh, if an NGO receives um, funds from a foreign donor above a certain threshold, let's say. 20, in Georgia, they're now talking about 20%. Uh, in, 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 mm. in Hungary, it was, uh, I forgot exactly, something like that as well. Well, then you must be declared as a foreign agent. Well, you know, you, you, you do realize what that means. You are an NGO, you're trying to do, I don't know, social work, humanitarian, human rights, defending minorities or what have you, and you have the label foreign agent. Well, uh, clearly that is, uh, that is what may be happening to Slovakia. I hope, I hope this will be avoided. Jacques Rybnik, one final question. Uh, the, uh, again, it's very early days. We have a 71-year-old suspect uh, who is in custody. Uh, we don't know if he is indeed the shooter, if, if he did it for ideological reasons, if he's mentally unstable. But you talked about violent rhetoric earlier. You talked about uh, being able to read his blog and, and, and how his ideas are known almost instantly nowadays. This shooting, this uh, the, the, this uh, age of violent rhetoric on social media, etc. It, it, it was only a matter of time before something like this happened. You know, uh, indeed, there is so much. Uh, I mean, this is something that the shooter himself denounced. This is a paradox. I looked at his blog. I, I didn't. I didn't study it thoroughly for the last. But the main thing that struck me is that. There are several uh, 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 blogs of his where he says, uh, this is terrible. The world is uh, 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 rife with violence. Uh, everybody, you know, things are out of control. Uh, and the governments, our governments are unable to rein it in, to control it, et cetera, et cetera. So he's, he presents himself as somebody who is indignant about the rise of violence, uh, uncontrolled violence, anarchy. And then he himself becomes what he's denouncing or, or he's acting. Uh, 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 so that, 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 is, uh, that is clearly, there must be a, there may be a mental condition, which we, we will find out. We will see if he, if he has uh, anything to say about his motives, uh, explicit. Uh, uh, but clearly, this idea that, yeah, you have... Uh, the feeling that the violence is rising in each country, but uh, uh, around us in the world. You know, you, mm. we are on France 24, you put on the news, you have war in the Middle East, war in Ukraine, uh, violent eruption. Uh, 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 we are in France. Uh, 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 today, there is a coverage of uh, uh, violence in, 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 in Nouvelle Caledonie, New Caledonia, etc. The, the, the news is made of violent, uh, 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 um, reports and uh, the feeling <laughs> that uh, the shooter uh, has been uh, uh, venting on his blog is this is terrible, I can't take it anymore and this is getting out of control governments are unable to control it and he clearly was unable to control himself Mm. Jacques Rupnik, many thanks for joining us uh, in this special edition. I want to thank as well Armin Georgian, who will be joining us later, by the way, in the France 24 debate when we'll be uh, talking about uh, what next for Georgia uh, and this foreign agents bill, uh, which is now up for a presidential uh, veto.